Hi guys and welcome to another video. Now today's video was originally going to be called 24 hours in the Lake District because that was the plan. I was going to spend 24 hours in the Lake District, take lots of photos, visit lots of locations and take you guys along with me. But unfortunately things haven't really gone to plan. So I think a far more befitting title for this video will be The Trials and Tribulations of Being a Landscape Photographer. Now before I get into this video, I just want to apologise if my voice is sounding a little bit rough. Um, the reality is I've been a little bit poorly. I've had um, a severe case of something called the man flu. Now the female viewers out there will probably recognise that the symptoms are exactly the same as the common cold. But you know, it does hit men far harder. So yeah, that's the reason why. And perhaps that's the reason why my mojo hasn't really kicked in yet today. Now as I alluded to in the start of this video, basically I've come to the Lake District for 24 hours. So it's a bit of a quick trip to the lakes but really it's all I could fit in it's that time of the year when there's some various jobs going on and finding time to actually come overnight over to the lakes has been quite difficult but you know lakes is a place that's really close to my heart it's it's where I've learned photography it's it's where I've visited again time and time again and it's uh, where I refine what I do really so I've, I love these trips so you can imagine my frustration of what my day has involved so far because basically it's involved driving lots of it lots of driving in the rain and it's just been really frustrating i have tried to wreck it out a couple of locations and really that didn't go to plan either i did take a couple of handheld shots which probably absolutely no good at all but the sun has finally broke and i've come to a new location for me anyway and that's kelly hill tarn i've never been here before it's by Coniston, it's, it's quite a popular spot with photographers, I can see why, it's really close to the road, super convenient, which is not something I'd normally go for. So my original plans for today were basically to come over fairly early, get myself up a hill and take some mountain shots, that's what I really wanted to do, I really fancied a good walk and just to take some shots, hopefully with nice golden light up the hills, that was the whole plan. So I'm quite gutted that I've had to resort to plan B which is to keep low level and to just do something really close to the road. And tomorrow, likewise, I know the forecast is changing and it's supposed to be a bit naff, so I want to do more sort of woodland stuff and, you know, I'm hoping I'll get a sunrise. I'm not sure if I will. But at the moment, at least the light has broke. The forecast has been totally wrong today, but at least it's got this bit right. The light's looking nice. I'm at the tarn, which you can probably see behind me. So I'm hoping I can get something here. Fingers crossed. So here you have Kelly Hill Tarn. To be honest, I can't believe I've never been here before. It's such a nice little spot. Admittedly, I do find it a bit off-putting that if I look that way, in the distance, I can see the garage where I've parked. So that's not quite so good. Probably the reason why I haven't been here. But considering Kelly Hill Tarn is quite close to the Cumbria Way, and I've spent a lot of time sort of walking the Cumbria Way and writing books and photographing it, it's actually quite a shock to me I actually haven't been here. But yeah, let's see if I can get a shot in the bag. Because if I'm being honest, that's something that's really worrying me at the moment. I've been here for a few hours now in the lakes and I haven't got one single shot. And as I've said time and time again, I do believe that the first shot is the most important. So yeah, I'm going to get my tripod out. I'm going to get the Panasonic S5 Mark II set up. And I'm going to try and get something. Well, I've composed the first shot, to be honest. It's not really doing much for me. But I so desperately need to get a first shot in the bag. There has been times so far on this trip when I've been thinking I would get absolutely nothing. Now what I'm doing, I'm going to fit a polarizing filter. The sun's off roughly to the side of me. So I'm hoping I'll get fairly nice polarization on this. As I say, I don't think this is the shot. But you can see the difference the polarizer is making to the sky there. It's quite pleasant, nothing. It's not really a very exciting shot. I think there's going to be better angles. But it's a start. I 
I'm looking at the old man of Coniston up in the distance and I'm just thinking I wish I was there but that is life. Now I'm shooting. F11, that should give me good front to back sharpness. Focusing midway into the frame. And it's just a question of waiting for the light. And take that. Two second self timer. That's not the one. I'm actually a little bit concerned about the amount of cloud building up to the west. Okay. Okay. I think about now. Yeah, pleasant enough shot. Not groundbreaking. By no means the final shot from this location. But it's a shot in the bag. Okay, so I found a composition I'm happy with. I'm just going to talk you through it just quickly. Basically, what I'm really attracted to is this S shape of the tarn round here. So I've, I've gained myself a little bit of height and I've managed to zoom in enough just to crop out this bank of the tarn. So basically, you've just got that S shape there. And then I'm really keen to get the old man of Coniston in, which is there. And obviously then he sees two gorgeous trees. But if you look at the light, and I'm not sure if you can actually see that, well, basically there pretty much isn't any. There's a big bank of rain coming in. Now, on the horizon, there is a little bit of a gap. So I've got a feeling I may be getting wet, but you never know, I may get the shot. Really, it's just a question of being a bit of a waiting game, but I think this is the only shot I'm going to get tonight, so I'm prepared to sit it out, I'm prepared to get a little bit wet. Well, I waited, I waited and I waited. I waited for about an hour and a half until the rain finally caught up. Unfortunately, the light was not to be. However, upon reviewing my images, I did find one which I took while I was actually trying to find the right viewpoint. Uh, which I was actually quite pleased with. The light was quite nice on it, and I'm going to take the one as a consolation shot. However, it wasn't to be the final image that I actually wanted, and Kelly Hill Tarn is definitely one that I will have to return back to. Such is the nature of landscape photography. Good morning. Well, I was pleasantly surprised with the four photos I took yesterday. I think it's kind of proof that sometimes you just have to persevere. Because honestly, there were points yesterday on that drive when it just didn't stop raining and sitting in the van when it was continuing to rain. And I did wonder to myself if I was actually going to get a single shot. And it wouldn't be the first time I've left a location, gone on a trip, not managed a shot. At least not managed a shot that I was happy with. Now obviously, it would have been quite easy to just take a lot of absolutely naff photos. But I kind of, if, I'm, if I get my camera out of the bag, I really want the shots to count, I think. That's, I'm never satisfied with just taking a photo for the sake of it. I, I want to take a photo that's nice, so that's something I strive to do every time. And I think that's one thing I do sort of struggle with sometimes with these YouTube videos. Because there's been quite a few videos where I've recorded them, but they actually haven't gone live simply because I've been happy with the photos. And I think, that's, I think it's important for me. I don't want to be the kind of photographer on YouTube that's just going to take a photo and put a substandard photo up just for the sake of it. Just to uh, satisfy the algorithm as such. Right then, so it basically rained throughout the night and then sort of cleared probably about one o'clock in the morning maybe, a bit before. But now it's cleared up again, so I think really 
I'm trying to make the most of the blue hour. I think that's all I can do. And I think that's a good tip is if you're out and the forecast is an ideal, you're always going to get a bit of blue light around the blue hour. Funny enough, that's why it's called the blue hour. And basically the blue hour is, runs roughly an hour before sunrise and an hour after sunset. So as you can see from the scene in front of me with the boats and the lake, there's not that much going on. And there's a lot of cloud, but I think it should look quite nice as a panoramic and just the boats and keep it simple. Now a panoramic's gonna work quite nicely simply because it'll cut out a lot of the sky because the sky has basically very little interest. And by the very nature of shooting this time of day, my exposure is going to be quite long. So I'm hoping I can get a nice bit of motion blur on the water just to sort of smooth things out a bit. I'll compose the shot and find out. Now, I've got the polarizer fitted just simply because I take a little bit of the glare off the water and also help increase the shutter speed. ISO 100. I'm going to F16, not that it needs that much front to back sharpness, uh, it's more the fact that I want to try and extend the exposure as long as possible without using any other sort of filters. Let's give me a four second exposure. Now, looking at the histogram, I can actually expose it a bit more to the right. I might still actually in post bring the exposure back down to still keep the sort of mood, but by exposing to the right, and by that mean I mean sort of basically, especially exposing it to the point where your highlights start clipping and then bring it back a notch. What we're doing then is we're ensuring we get as much maximum shadow detail as possible. And this shot's gonna need all the shadow detail I can pull out of it. And whilst that shot's okay, I think I'd like to try and blur the water a little bit more. Which I'm hoping will help keep some of the reflections. Simply because if the water's moving, you sort of get that sort of highlight movement of the water, don't you? If I, if I can actually blur it a little bit more, then hopefully the reflection will come through. So I've put a six times filter on. And we're going for F10 at 25 seconds. Which I think this is probably going to be underexposed. And that's quite common when you put an ND filter on. Of course, the only issue with this is I'm going to have some movement on my boat, but I don't actually mind that. That's fine. Well, I say that, but the boat's moving far more than you'd actually imagine. So I think I'm actually going to exaggerate that. F11, 60 for a second. Basically increased exposure. That one was underexposed, as predicted. And when the shot finishes taking... I will first of all put up the shot just with the polarizer and the shorter exposure. And then I'll put up this shot with the longer exposure, which has a bit more of a painterly feel to it, I think. So last night when I was sitting in the van, I was starting to think about what actually are the trials and tribulations for a landscape photographer. And I think ultimately the top of the list is weather. You know, you do have gear considerations, gear can break, but you can take backups with you. There's uh, access times, you may get to a location at the wrong time of day, the wrong time of the year. You may not even be able to get to the location at all, but just simply because of access issues. But I think all these can be worked around. Um, but the big one is weather, because there's not really a fat lot you can do about the weather. You know, you can't change it, if only you could. And if you can't change the weather, what you have to do is either not take any photos or try and work with it. And really, that's what I've had to do on this trip. And as I say, it hasn't planned out at all like I planned it to. In my head, I had a list of locations I wanted to visit at the time of day. Um, I looked at the forecast, which is the best I can do. And then the forecast said the light should be good for these locations at these times. So I did everything I could do 
physically as a photographer to try and sort of avoid these problems but ultimately the weather had the biggest impact so I think after the weather you can't control the weather so the only thing you can try to control is your mindset and by that I mean basically don't get too disheartened if you get somewhere and the conditions aren't right yes sometimes it'll be the shoot will be a total write-off and you'll get nothing but it's never lost time because what you can do with that time is try and recce locations from the light nicer and just push yourself a little bit try and take shots in conditions that you wouldn't normally take shots in and you never know you may be pleasantly surprised i know i was yesterday anyway guys i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please consider subscribing to the channel give it a thumbs up if you haven't and i'll see you again soon for another one thanks for watching